Hey there, this is Handyman007 and today I'm going to show you how to install a toilet seat bidet to make it easier for you and your kids to clean up, conserve more water, and even save hundreds of trees a year. Oh, and I'm not talking about this kind of bidet, I'm talking about this bidet. Did you know that in order to manufacture a single toilet paper roll, it takes 37 gallons of water? And to make a single person's lifetime supply of toilet paper would mean cutting down 384 trees. Whereas using a bidet only consumes one-eighth of a gallon of water and help you use 75% less toilet paper in a year. Besides, washing instead of just wiping after you're done with your business is so much more hygienic. And don't even get me started about wet wipes. Aside from causing skin irritation and rashes, wet wipes can still leave some residue and worse, are actually harmful to the ocean and sewers. Because unlike toilet paper, wet wipes take a very, very, very long time to dissolve. So unless you also want your plumbing to clog up, you should never, ever flush wet wipes down a toilet bowl. Okay, there are many toilet bidet brands and models out there. What I got is a Phyto toilet seat bidet model PT7100. And I purchased this online for 692 pesos or $13.64. I'm going to talk about its features and benefits in a bit. But first, let's take out everything out of the box to check for all the parts. We have the main toilet bidet assembly. The design is quite simple and elegant, very nice. We have a plastic tube, widely known in the industry as a PU or polyurethane pipe. I think this is about 2.5 feet long. We have this half-inch metal adapter, which honestly feels very premium to the touch. It's coated with some kind of protective layer, which I can only assume minimizes rust. We have two water inlet strainer gaskets. These are used for filtering debris and other foreign materials in the pipeline from entering our bidet system. It also comes with a flat wrench, 9 16 on one side and half an inch on the other side. Although this looks suspiciously a lot wider than half an inch to me. Hmm, we'll find out soon enough. And finally, we have the assembly instructions and the warranty card. By the way, the instructions also stated that we will need thread seal tape, also known as Teflon tape, and a screwdriver, both of which are not included in the package. Okay, these are the inherent benefits of using a bidet in general, and even how bidets can help alleviate the struggle of people with certain conditions or illnesses. But out of this product's many features, two things stood out for me. One, it is non-electric, which meant it doesn't rely on power to work and therefore quite safe in the bathroom. And two, it has a dual nozzle system. So the way it works is that on one side, we have the typical mode for washing your behind, and on the other side, we have a mode specific for feminine washing. So how far and in which direction you turn the knob determines which of these two spray nozzles is activated and the pressure of water that actually comes out. So I think this dual nozzle system is a welcome feature for families with female members, may they be adults or children. After installing this later, I'd like to take a closer look at this dual nozzle system and analyze exactly how it works. And with that, let's head on over to our bathroom where we will install the bidet on this toilet seat. Okay, we do have kids who use this toilet independently, but they do still need this step stool and toddler toilet seat adapter to make things work. For now, let me set these aside to make more space. The first step is to shut off our water inlet valve. And I'll use this flat wrench to loosen the flexible hose of our bidet spray. Then, we'll wrap some new Teflon tape around the thread. Good. 
time to connect this metal adapter. But first, let me unscrew this locking nut and set the strainer gasket into place. Perfect fit. What is ironic though is that this flat wrench that came with the package is simply too big for this metal adapter that's also part of the package. Anyway, I'll just tighten by hand. Then we'll also wrap Teflon tape on this side of the adapter like so. Now, we can reconnect our bidet spray flexible hose. So basically, the metal adapter is now in between the water inlet valve and the flexible hose of our bidet spray. If you don't have a bidet spray to begin with, then you can connect the metal adapter between your water inlet valve and the flexible hose that leads up to your toilet tank. Now, we take this locking nut I removed from the adapter earlier and slide it onto the plastic tube. I twist the tube on the adapter spout and secure it in place by screwing in the locking nut. So, that section is ready and we'll come back to it later. Meanwhile, it's time to remove this toilet cover and seat. And this is done by simply removing two bolts, here and here. Note that underneath are nuts that hold the bolts in place. So while holding the nut with your fingers or with a pair of pliers, loosen the bolt on top with a screwdriver. With both sides now unfastened, we simply lift the entire seat and cover out of the way. Now it's time to mount this toilet seat bidet. Obviously, the right orientation is with the holes of the nozzles facing outwards, away from the bowl, like so. Adjust the position of the assembly so that it's at the center of the bowl. Then, slide the mounting plates over the holes. Then we return the toilet seat and cover on top, making sure that all the holes align. We secure everything down with the bolts and locking nuts. That's one. And that's two. The toilet seat and cover may tend to wiggle out of alignment while tightening, so readjust as necessary. Finally, we need to provide the water source for the assembly. So from the top, we go down below to work on this water inlet. The process is pretty straightforward. Basically, we connect this end of our plastic tube here. And to do that, we remove this plastic locking nut and slide it onto our tube like so. Then we twist the tube onto the spout and secure the connection with the plastic locking nut. Let's give it a couple of tugs to make sure it's really held in place. Good. Then, we open the water inlet valve and check for leaks. What I like to do is wipe all the connections dry with toilet paper, then feel all the surfaces with my bare hands for any sign of water. If I feel any dampness, then I recheck the connections, even possibly add more Teflon tape. But everything feels dry to me, so I think we did a good job. Let me check our bidet spray if there's any water restriction. None? Good. Okay, let's test everything out. All we need to do is turn that knob left or right. Whoa, we actually have a good spray action going on here. Now, let me test the other nozzle by turning the knob to the opposite end. Awesome! Okay, so I figured out how simple and effective this dual nozzle system works. And it's easier to observe how the water sprays from the side. Here's your typical washing mode. And here's the feminine washing mode. Good. 
Did you spot the difference? Once again, typical washing, feminine washing. See the difference in the spray angle? Back, forward, back, forward, back. You, you, you get what I mean, right? Anyway, I also wanted to see if our kid's toilet seat adapter would block the spray. No, it doesn't, which is great. Otherwise, I will have to remove everything and reposition the bidet assembly a bit forward. Even our own tabo can now hang easy because using this toilet seat bidet is so much more convenient and conserves even more water. Thanks for watching, and you can do this.